today we are here for the last Keep It Reef Friday Night Drifts for the year down at Calder Park yet again. Spending a lot of time down here at Calder Park, aren't I? The layout for this track, which I'll put up on the screen for you, is actually quite a bit different than the Driftex layout. So we're not actually using the national track. What we're actually doing is we're using entirely the Thunderdome but in addition to the formula drift layout, which starts at the start finish line, has the big sweeper and then the S, they're actually doing what they've called the Kang layout, which is down the other side, which uses the old pit lane, the old Oscar pit lane. So that's the deal so far. We've got here a bit early, so a lot of the guys are still arriving. I'm gonna walk you through some of the cars and catch up again. Yeah, I'm gonna love you I'll give you the world of what I've got The fans and fans, baby, I have not It's gonna love you Yeah, I'm gonna love you I'm gonna love you, baby Cross my heart and hope to die We just, uh, just wrapped up with the first major session. As you can tell behind me, the sun has just sort of vanished. So we're heading into the night session now. And the night session's always where you get a lot of good sort of content. Cause a lot of these cars have underglows, have lights and LEDs and stuff on them. So they're really gonna pop at night. Now I'm gonna get some photos. I'm gonna try and get some video. I'm on my last battery. I didn't bring my charger. Catch up with you in a bit. How's it going, Jace? Oh, hey, it all, man. <laughs> And that is a wrap for the night. The track is now officially closed. Had quite a few accidents, quite a few crashes down at Kang Corner. They're now just sweeping the track. I guess we'll head off. Catch you soon. Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a couple of days since the Keep It Reap night and I'm gonna run you through some of the best photos that I edited for the night over in Lightroom. Let's jump over there now and we'll see what I've done. We're over in Lightroom now and the first car you'll see is S13 Silvia owned by Age Panaro, powered by Turbo 1JZ. I really like this image and I really like this car. The livery that he's got on it just really, like the colors just really pop off the black face of the car. And obviously powered by a 1JZ, the thing's off its head. This image itself, I edited it relatively straightforward, just trying to desaturate all the colors that weren't the colors of the livery. So your reds, oranges, yellows, and sort of the greens as well. Reds and oranges are really desaturated. And then obviously the blues, the pinks and the purples are all in the livery, so I left them in. And then from there, just as you've probably seen in all of my videos, the most important thing to do is to draw the viewer's eyes into the, into the subject. Easiest way to do that is to take a radial filter and invert it. And then if I hit O on the keyboard to show the mask, you'll see that it fades in and doesn't affect the center. And then I just bring the exposure down. So this is before the mask, and then you bring it in just a little bit to draw the, uh, the viewer's attention in just want to point put this photo up on the screen this was mike lake's e36 as you can see uh that's not what a rim is supposed to look like the proximity was too close we'll say that this gentleman here is ryan brown um i believe he's a local melburnian might be wrong on that these guys if you ask me are insane so i, I got a couple of photos of these guys the edits I did on these are super, super simple. Basically just desaturated everything. In the in this case, what I did is it, rather than doing the traditional radial filter, I actually tried out the subject mask. So if I look at this, it, it affects everything but him. It does also do bits of the bike, but that's less of an issue. And then if you see, if you bring down the exposure, it's only him left. We just bring it down slightly just to sort of make him pop off the background. And that's the image there. 
one of my favorite photos I took for the night. If any of you were down at the event, you probably know who these guys are. Maybe not by name, but you know where they stand. You know what they do. Their entire goal is to G up the drivers into getting close to this wall. Some of the people getting real close to the wall. The reason I like this photo so much is because this is Torionis' boot lid, and this is what happens when you get too close to the wall. This is the second Friday night drift in a row where this has come off, and he actually said that these guys could keep it. So they actually went home with his boot lid, and it's gonna become a garage ornament. Absolutely great guys to hang around with. As you can tell, they don't take things too seriously, and they have an absolute ball, which is what, oh, it's, what it's all about. On to the next image. Now, I love shooting drifting at night, it's a lot more challenging because there's less light, that means higher ISOs, slower shutter speeds. Your percentage hit rate on shots goes down quite substantially and also camera autofocus struggles a bit more in the dark. This is H. Panaro's car again. Now, if we go back to the original photo, there's not actually a lot I did to this. I've got a little night preset that I applied to it. Basically just bumps up the exposure, which you can see, brings down the contrast, because if you leave the contrast up, it looks hideous. So you bring down the contrast a little bit, cool down the temperature and just sort of bring out detail. From there, normally what I do is I mess around with the temperature and the tint just to sort of bring it back a little bit, just to adjust for the image. Every preset you buy, you use, you make, you have to adjust. There's no such thing as a one-click preset, no matter what people try and sell you. Just fiddling around with exposure, highlights, I think more exposure, clarity and texture. I'm not the biggest fan of high clarity night images. As you can see, I tend to actually take clarity and texture out of night images because I find if you ramp it up, everything gets a bit weird. Even if you've ramped the texture up, it looks like it's been badly photoshopped. Especially with night images where you're under lights, taking away some dehaze, going into the negatives on dehaze, actually sort of make the lights spread out more, make it look like there's more smoke, more dust, more haze. I add the radial gradient and I just fiddle around with the settings on it until I'm happy. Nine times out of 10, it's just bring the exposure down and that's the finished edit. And yeah, that's basically the images that I took for the night. The final images I got, the final show for the night, the Freestyle Kings, completely pitch black, but they had the flamethrowers going. They had the, these photos technically are not the best. I'm shooting at one 100th of a second, ISO 800. There's gonna be motion blur on these images because these guys are flying off the ramp quite fast. This one's quite sharp, but yeah, trying to get them in the air with the fire underneath them to help illuminate them and make everything look cool. And this is probably one of my favorite images. Flying through the air shows the, the scale of everything. You've got the little puffs of flame around as well. This one, much higher ISO, but again, for a 61 megapixel camera, 2000 ISO looks no problems, no worries at all. Um, and even if you have a look detail, there's absolutely no noise reduction on this. Sony gang, you don't need it. That's the images. That's the process behind editing them. I hope you found it informative. I hope you found it useful and entertaining. If you did like the video, make sure you leave a like down below. It helps me a lot, helps the algorithm. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified about all my new content and leave a comment down below telling me what you liked about the video. With that all said and done, guys, I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.